Shaped asymmetry with the eczema laser, clearing psoriasis with as few as two phototherapy sessions. So welcome, Catherine. Everybody. My name is Catherine. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you to Dr. Adams and to Chris and to everybody for having me here today. It really is an honor to be able to speak here. Um, so I'll be talking about plaque-based self-blistering dosimetry with Exxon Laser, um, clearing psoriasis with as few as two phototherapy sessions. And so the research presented here is partially supported by the National Psoriasis Foundation, and I have no other conflicts of interest to disclose. So as we all know, psoriasis is a very miserable disease that can very negatively affect the patient's quality of life. One traditional modality of treatment is the UVB phototherapy box. So here we see the patient going into the traditional box, and we all know that this is very safe and efficacious, however, it's a very inconvenient modality of treatment. So most patients require treatment about three times a week for two to three months, which amounts to about 30 to 40 sessions total. And this is, of course, a great inconvenience for the patients. So how can we get rid of this inconvenience? So using the Exzymer laser, which has a targeted deliverance of phototherapy, we can target only the psoriatic plaques. And because the plaques can tolerate more light than normal skin can, so we spare spare the normal skin here, an increased light will lead to an increase in efficacy. And this increase in efficacy can lower the number of treatments that are required to treat psoriasis. So this is the x laser here, and it's a fiber optic wand that has a targeted tip to deliver the light only to the psoriatic plaque. So traditionally with the UVB box, Dosing is normally based on erythromogenic doses, which is basically the dose of, that causes the normal skin to become red. Or, so that's basically the top limit. Sometimes a sub-erythromogenic dose is used, which is just below that. So with the laser, because it's more targeted and we don't hit the normal skin, we can use supra-erythromogenic doses, which can sometimes be multiple levels higher than the erythromogenic dose. So as we discussed before, Eczema is a targeted therapy unlike the other whole body treatment modalities like Gekkerman, um, Huva, and UVB box. And therefore, a higher dosing increases efficacy, which reduces the number of treatments required, which increases the convenience to the patient. So in addition, Eczema is also very safe. So first of all, it's completely external treatment, so there are no, almost no internal side effects. Um, there's also less exposure to UVB, since only the psoriatic plaques are targeted instead of the whole skin. There's also a long duration of therapeutic effect, um, and this also leads to a decrease in the number of treatments needed. And it has been shown that possibly the, even though it's at a higher dose, fewer treatments, the cumulative dose of UVB is less than if you were to start at a minimal dose and use multiple treatments. So however, there are still some limitations that exist with Eczymer, and you know, although it's a lot less than the 30 to 40 treatment sessions required with the UVB box, it still requires 10 to 12 treatments, and for most patients this is still considered inconvenient. And also, Eczymer for up to now has been used mainly for localized psoriasis and not generalized psoriasis. So Dr. Ku and his team actually published the first study ever to use the Eczymer laser for generalized whole body psoriasis. And of course, the plaques have to be somewhat confluent. And he actually found great results. So 77 percent of patients achieve POSI 75 by week 12 with using only the Eczymer laser. And about 80 percent of patients were able to maintain POSI 50 into up to six months of follow-up. But can we do better than this? So, so far the Eczymer laser dosing is based on normal skin. So it's based on the minimal erythema dose, or the MED, of normal skin. So basically what causes the normal skin to get redder. And 
then in order to determine the dose for the plaque, we either multiply it by a factor of two, three, or four based on what it looks like. Or a different protocol is to estimate the thickness of the plaque and determine the starting dose of the excimer laser on that. So that's all still a bunch of, um, that's still based on the normal skin. However, why not base the dosing on the plaque itself? So what, this is what we call plaque-based dosing. So about 15 years ago, in 2000, Dr. Rox Anderson and his team actually used the Excimer laser at very high doses, so at 8 times the MED and 16 times the MED, and treated a patient's, uh, two, uh, two plaques on a patient. And with only one exposure to the laser, two months and four months after, the patient was still in remission. So, however, Dr. Anderson um, didn't go through with this new strategy because he was afraid that the patients would blister. So what we thought was why not use a dose just below this blistering dose, or the sub-blistering dosimetry. So what we would do is first determine the minimal erythema dose of the plaque and then the minimal blistering dose of the plaque. So this is Dr. Ku's fellow, Dr. Ethan Levin, and another medical student. And if you look here, this is the way to initially dose the laser. So if we first start off at a very low dose and then increase with different doses up until a very high dose. The minimal erythema dose is, of the plaque is the dose that causes the plaque to get a little bit redder. And what we found is that patients generally don't care if the plaque gets redder. What they care about is if the plaque blisters. And this is the minimal blistering dose, so this is what it looks like. So this shows that we're not limited by the minimal erythema dose and can in fact go up multiple levels higher. So Dr. Ku and his team took this concept and applied it to two patients. Um, so he used the Excimer at sub-blistering doses, and these patients achieved POSI 75 after only two sessions of phototherapy. So this is one of um, the before and after pictures of one of the patients. And if you can look at a close-up here, you can see that the plaque is almost completely gone, and what's left over is actually just tanning from the high doses of laser that was used, applied to the plaque. And you can see here another example using the very high dose, and here it looks like the plaque did get redder and um, maybe even worse, but an important thing to remember is this is due to the high dose of laser use. So eventually, six weeks after treatment, you can see that the redness is essentially gone, and what's left is just um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Here's another example, and you can see here that this is one week after treatment, you see an increase in redness and some blistering, but four weeks after treatment, all that redness is gone, and it's just some tanning that's left over. So we thought that this was really interesting, so we wanted to see what was happening underneath the skin. So we did some immunoprofiling, which is basically we took a biopsy before the laser treatment and after the laser treatment, ran it through flow cytometry, and analyzed the cells that popped up. And what we found was that there was a great reduction in T cells present in the plaque after treatment with the laser. So we also looked at TNF alpha producing cells compared to non-TNF alpha producing cells, and we found that before treatment there's a very high number, but after treatment the total number of T cells is reduced, as well as the number of TNF alpha producing cells. So you can also see this, these results in a pie chart. And so before treatment, there's about a little bit over 50% of TNF alpha producing T cells. And after the laser treatment, this was greatly reduced to only 17%. So similarly with IL-2 producing cells, you can see that um, before treatment, there's a much greater number, and after treatment, it's almost completely wiped out. And you can see it here in the pie chart that it was decreased from 23% to only 1%. And so like I said before, after the laser treatment, most patients are able to maintain their um, maintain remission for a long period of time, so up to six months, and this could be partially attributed to the fact that these T cells are almost completely eliminated. 
So here's some more data with interleukin-17 and interferon gamma. And this is comparing non-lesional skin to lesional, to lesional after laser treatment. So you can see that, again, similar to the data before, the number of IL-17 producing cells as well as interferon gamma producing cells is greatly reduced after laser treatment and is almost similar to the profile of the non-lesional skin. So, of course, the sublistrin dosimetry does come with some risk. So, the patients do have a risk of burning or blistering, and this is mainly because um, not all <laughs> psoriatic plaques are equal. So, they do tolerate different amounts of light, so inadvertently, the patient may burn or blister. Um, there is a risk of chemnerization. However, we have not found um, this in any of the patients, and a possible explanation could be that the T cells were pretty much wiped out, so then this could prevent the cause of chemnerization. And then the last is an increased risk of skin cancer. Um, so this is always a risk, however, the laser has been used worldwide um, for over 10 years, and there's been no documented increased risk of cancer. So future clinical um, research uh, is directed towards determining a one-shot plaque-based dosing strategy for the laser. So I showed this picture before, but currently the laser is dosed on some, a somewhat tedious process. So each of these are different, you know, different laser shots at different doses. However, the Exciter laser does come with a tip that's removable. It's basically just to prevent the laser from touching the skin. So we thought, what if we took this tip and manipulated it to deliver more than one dose in one shot? So this is Dr. Kuhn, Dr. Levin. So if you see here, there's four different discrete squares. So what we found is that we don't need the entire two by two centimeter um, area of the tip to deliver just one dose of light. What we can do is split the tip up into multiple discrete squares, and each square can represent a different dose. So here's the, di the design that we came up with, and as you can see here, the middle of the square is 100% of the dose that we set the Examer laser to. This is 80%, 60%, 40%, and 30% of the dose. So if we set the laser to 1,000 <coughs> millijoules, the middle, will, the middle square will deliver 1,000 millijoules. This will deliver 800 millijoules, 600 millijoules, 400, and 300. And this is what the tip looks like. So with that, we can effectively test multiple doses at one time, which will basically make, the, um, make it a lot more efficient to determine the optimal dosing of Exzymer given to the patient. So phototherapy, as we all know, is very safe and efficacious. However, it's still very inconvenient to the patient. So with this new tip and this new strategy, we can make the dosing more database and effectively eliminate the guesswork that's behind dosing that exists now. And by doing so, we can take the inconvenience out of phototherapy. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I'd also like, like to thank Dr. Ku, Dr. Leal, Dr. Bozenblum, Roberto, and Jeff. Um, they've all helped with this. And once again, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you.